I'm Daniel Sousa and welcome to Aptitude Academy. This is part 6 on the GRE Quant Fundamental Playlist. Today we are going to be discussing ratio, proportion and percentages. Let's get started. Ratios are basically ways to relate one quantity of data to another. You write ratios like this. Right? If you have a quantity A and you have a quantity B, you relate them with the ratio as A is to B. Now this also means that the ratio is A over B. To understand this, let's take a simple example. Suppose you have a basket of fruits, right? And you've got apples and you've got blueberries. Now, you've got 10 apples here and you've got 20 blueberries. So what ratio does is it gives you a way to relate an apple and a blueberry. So let's write first the total number of apples and the total number of blueberries. So we've got uh, 10 apples and we've got 20 blueberries, right? So 10 is to 20. This is our initial ratio. Now what we can do is we can simplify this ratio by converting it to a fraction. So converting a ratio into a fraction, you just write it as 10 over 20, right? Now this is equal to what? 10 ones are, 10 twos are, 1, 2. So 1 is to 2 is the simplified ratio. So basically what you're saying is, it says that for every one apple, there are two blueberries. So for every one apple, there are two blueberries. And that is how your ratio helps you form a connection between two quantities that are completely unrelated. Ratios can be formed between two or more than two quantities. For example, in our basket, we had 10 apples, 20 blueberries, but what if I added a couple of bananas? What if I added 15 bananas here? Right, now our ratio becomes 10 is to 20 is to 15. To simplify it, I would divide it by 5, not by 10, because now we have 15 in the mix, right? And we want integers. So what I'm going to do is, this will become 2 is to 4 is to 3. So now you know that for every 2 apples, there's going to be 4 blueberries and 3 bananas. So ratios help us relate quantities which don't have anything in common. But what if we start relating ratios? What are they called? They're called proportions. So proportions are basically ways for you to relate ratios together. So suppose you have one ratio A is to B and you have a second ratio C is to D. Now the only way to relate these two ratios is by proportions. And the proportion symbol is, is the same as, right? Now, one way to use proportions to your advantage is to use the property of multiplication. In a proportion, all the elements have a name. The ones on the ends are known as extremes and the ones in the middle are known as the means. Now, the law of multiplication that I was saying, which is very, very important in solving sums, is this. The product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means. So, the product of the extremes AD is equal to BC. Right? Now, this is very, very important. To solve sums in a scenario where, suppose for a given quantity, you know one ratio, and they're asking you in a different scenario, for the same quantity, you have one unknown in the ratio. Right? Then, this property will save you. Now these were just the basics of ratios and proportions. If you want to learn this topic further, I suggest you go and check out my playlist on ratio and proportion videos that I've already linked down in the description below. Now let's move on to percentages. Now percentages basically mean out of 100 or hundreds. If you watch the fifth lecture on the GRE Quant Fundamental playlist, you will notice that the second place value on the right hand side of the, of the decimal point was the hundreds place, THS, which means 1 over 100. Percent basically means the same thing. For the GRE, three things you need to understand is percentage increase, percentage decrease, and what is the difference when you write a number with and without a percentage sign? Now the best way to write percentages is writing part over the whole. Right? So now, suppose you have a basket of fruits, say 50 fruits, and you've taken out 10 fruits from these. Right? So I've taken out 10 fruits. Now how will I find out the percentage of the fruits that have been taken out? So what you're going to do is you're going to write part. What is the part you've taken out? 10. You don't need to write fruits. And what is the whole? The whole is complete, so 50, right? So this will be 20. But now since you've calculated the percentage, you need to write percent, right? Now, when you see a number that says, say, 63%, it basically means 63 divided by 100. So this will be 20 into 1 by 100, right? Ones are, fives are, which is 1 by 5, which is exactly what we got here. So always replace the percentage sign by 1 by 100 and that's how you get a percentage to a fraction. Now sometimes on the GRE, a small part of the sum is going to be to calculate the percentage change, right? The percentage increase or the percentage decrease. Let's see how to do that. You're going to have two scenarios. When a number changes, you're either going to have a percentage increase or a percentage decrease. Now, you'll have a percentage increase when a small number becomes a big number, right? So when 300 is increased to 350, you're going to have a percentage increase because the number is increased. Similarly, when a big number goes on to a small number, like 400 becomes 350, we'll have a percentage decrease because the number has decreased. Now, the formula for percentage increase is basically big number minus small number divided by small number. Right? And for percentage decrease, it's going to be big number 
minus small number divided by big number. Now, what will happen is on the GRE, you will go and revise, you, sorry, you'll go and memorize this uh, formula and you will go and you might mess it up. And if you mess it up, you lose your mark. So, the best way to understand this is to not memorize this. Just see what is common in, the both, in both the formulas. You've got big number minus small number, big number minus small number. So basically, the numerator has to be the difference of the numbers, right? So if 300 goes to 350, find the difference, 50. That's all. Your 400 goes to 350, find the difference, 50. So your generalized formula is going to be difference divided by what is this small number here and big number here, right? Don't memorize it. This is the initial number, right? If you've noticed, here it goes from big to small. So here in the denominator, it goes big. Here it goes from small to big. So in the denominator, it goes to small. So basically, this is your initial number. Now, whether this is a percentage increase or a decrease, you should be able to understand. If it goes from a small number to a big number, this will be your percentage increase. And if it goes from a big number to a small number, then this will give you your percentage decrease. Something interesting to notice is that both of these are calculated on the initial value, right? Because after that, it changes to some number. You don't know if it's increasing or it's decreasing. Something similar in profit and loss, where the profit percentage and the loss percentage are calculated on the cost price, not the selling price. Alright, so this was part 6 on the GRE Quant Fundamental playlist, where we looked at ratios, proportions and percentages. With this video, we come to an end of the GRE Arithmetic section. The next video is going to be on GRE Algebra, so make sure you check that out as well. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'd also appreciate it if you repost this on Facebook and tell your friends about it. These lectures are completely free and I do them for the benefit of the students. So make sure you share them, download them, do whatever you can to get the word out there. Cheers! Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to get access to all my videos. I release new lectures every Thursday. Cheers!